Y'all ready to be history? It started. Welcome. Hi. 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 Hello, everyone. To the Pro Audio Suite. These guys are professional. They're motivated. Thanks to Tribooth, the best vocal booth for home or on the road voice recording. And Austrian Audio, making passion heard. Introducing Robert Marshall from Source Elements and Someone Audio Post, Chicago. Darren Robert Robertson from Voodoo Radio Imaging, Sydney. Tech to the VO Stars, George the Tech Whitam from LA. And me, Andrew Peters, voiceover talent and home studio guy. Line up, ladies! Here we go. Welcome to another Pro Audio Suite. Thanks to Austrian Audio, making passion heard, and Tribooth. Don't forget the code PAP200 to get $200 off your Tribooth. Now, there was a product that um, Source Elements launched, ooh, it would be about four or five years ago, I'm guessing. 2017, VIS- probably. Yeah. yeah, that'd be four or five years Six ago. Six years ago. Well, we're only just into 2023. <laughs> Who's Could have been the hairs? end of... End of 2017, the beginning of 23, it's five. Not that I'm, you know, splitting hairs. Thank you, George. Um, But anyway, VISDN. I don't know how well that took off, but I'm hearing that some people are using it in a really interesting way. Yeah, no, it it took off quite well. It's the... uh, it's it's the last part of the Lake Mead ISDN lake to dry up. Mm, yeah. um, it's um, basically what it is, is a virtualized ISDN circuit. So what happened is as different areas began phasing out or making it harder and harder to get a new ISDN circuit, move an ISDN circuit, even keep your ISDN circuit, people needed to still have ISDN. And so what we did is we um, we would purchase an ISDN circuit for you here in Chicago, send you a box, you would plug your Zephyr or whatever ISDN box you had into our our box. Our box would dial up or would connect over to the servers in Chicago and would then let put you onto the ISDN network. So basically what happened is your Zephyr had no idea that we stuck the internet in between it and its ISDN line. It thought it was connected directly to it. Um, at that time, everybody had a Chicago ISDN phone number, and they were happy because they didn't have to pay AT and T a thousand dollars a month anymore to have ISDN. And by the way, you can still get ISDN. We're, we'll be providing ISDN until the year twenty fifty. Give us a call. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, but. The, the the use case that you're talking about, the funny use case, is the fact that, and George, I'm sure you know this, the the Zephyr Extreme is probably the greatest phone patch ever, I think. The question is why? Because it was, why it, it was, was it digital. Why was it such a good phone patch? It was truly digital. So what was it doing? What was it doing? So that, when you Because they sold, JK Audio and Telos yeah. both sold very expensive analog digital phone, phone. Those were no, analog. They, had, they didn't have any digital phone hybrids? Well, to be a true digital, okay, a hybrid that has some sort of digital circuitry to either work with a digital phone system in the office or one that had some sort of digital circuitry to try to separate the caller and the callee, that's not a digital phone patch in the sense that the Zephyr, as as is the nature of ISDN, the Zephyr made a digital phone call. The phone call, the Zephyr converted the audio to digital and then it was digital from there end to end. So there was perfect isolation between send and receive. Whereas when you look at an analog phone, it uses the same cables to send and receive. So you always have a little bit of echo. And if you realize with your phone patches, you always have a nulling feature or some way to try to minimize the echo, but you never, on a true analog phone patch, you never get rid of all the echo. It has to gate it. It has to process it to try to keep that echo gone completely. Whereas the Zephyr was digitally sending data, digitally receiving data. There was no crossing of those two paths. There was no distorting or degrading of the, of the because it was just converted right there at the Zephyr and sent. Um, because really ISDN was two normal phone calls bonded together. All that data was bonded together to make 128 you know, kilobits. The Zephyr is doing... The, for the phone call, it does the true 64K, you know, 8-bit, 8K phone call. So it's it's uh, it's essentially as as direct into the phone system as you could get, direct in and direct out, because you're really exchanging the true digital data that the phone system speaks, which is the G711 codec. That's the, uh, when, when you were using a Zephyr with two ISDN lines, you'd use MPEG-2 probably, it was a typical setting. But when yeah. you talk to someone on the phone, 
it's G711. And that is, I see. Yeah. And it usually gets terminated analog on the FRNs. And then you get So all not the, only yeah. is it separating the two, the side tone mm-hmm. from the return extremely well, it's also got more bandwidth. It's got a better codec for capturing the audio. It's it's sending the actual digital signal. conversion. So yeah. instead of sending some weak 3K analog audio signal that needs analog repeaters and has to make physical distance and is really, you know, prone to impedance issues and those types of things. Once it's converted to digital, as long as those bits arrive intact, you had exactly the audio you had. And if those bits didn't arrive, you all know what an ISDN box sounds like when it has a problem. It sounds like a turkey. You know? um, yeah, yeah. Then it's either good or bad, sort sort of is the nature of digital. But, you know, so, ISDN so is so when you look at the Telos HX1 digital hybrid, the part that's digital about this digital hybrid is simply the fact that it has an AES in and out. Correct. So, you know the phone systems that would be in a radio station for a call-in? So, they had, Telos had the 8x8 and the 12x12 and a couple other ones. You could buy those with analog cards or ISDN cards. Gotcha. And if you trunked it with ISDN, you would have extremely good game show calls or whatever the hell you were doing, interviews. Gotcha. If you were doing it with an analog, you know, it's, it would be as high quality as it can get. But again, you're trying to null out and eliminate echo when you're dealing with all the all the stuff that analog is known for being annoying for. So, yeah. So, we established that the Zephyr Extreme, which was originally like a $5,000 box, makes a really good phone hybrid. <laughs> yes. So, how is it possible that somebody could still be using one of those today here, to here, use as a phone pack? So, here's how you do it. A couple of things. First of all, also the, uh, the 9202 could make a phone call but could not receive it. Right. The big breakthrough with the Extremes that could make and receive a phone call. Right, so right. if you want to make a phone call with the extreme, you just basically go into the settings and you set it to answer all. Yeah. And then it's going to answer your phone call when it comes in. Now your phone service has to include voice service. And if you yes, order your, voice di- if plus you, yeah, data. if you order your ISDN line with voice service, then you've got it. Cause now you, um, all this is completely uh, anachronistic by the way. Yeah. Folks, this is very 1980s, nineties, two thousands. Um, so then after that, if you wanted to make a phone call with your Zephyr, you'd hit dial. And then instead of hammering the phone number, you'd hit no to go down one setting. You'd hit select. Then you'd hit yes to switch it from Zephyr to phone. Right. And then you'd hit select again, arrow up to the space where the phone number is, dial your phone number, and now you're making a phone call with the Zephyr instead of a, an ISDN call. Right, but exactly. did you know the Zephyr had one more dialing mode? Uh, no. I don't know. Maybe export. Oh, export. Yeah. You know what that was? Well, they had a product called the export. Yeah. And it didn't bond to ISDN. Correct. B-channel. So here's so here's what the export ISDN. was. Here, here's exactly what the export is. You want to make the highest quality phone call you can, but the other end only has an analog phone line. They don't have a digital phone line, but right. they do have an export. So you plug, an export was like an oval looking, sort of Zephyr looking box. Yeah, I know people that bought one thinking By they mistake. were getting yeah. a cheaper, more portable <laughs> Zephyr Extreme. Right. Nope. So you'd, you'd plug an analog phone line into this thing, and then from a Zephyr, you would make an export call, which would digitize your audio, but it would make it in analog modem, you know? like Yeah, like 56K baud 56K data, and it would basically convert your audio to like, 24 kilobits per second. It, yep. It'd be higher quality than what the analog phone line can do in analog because it was transmitting digital, but over modem it was tones. G.722, right? No, no, no. This was, um, well, the it might have been G722. I, 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 for, I forget, but the formatting of the call was such that the data was encoded on an analog signal, essentially. Yeah, we used something like that for field, for field reporting mm-hmm. when we were doing radio, like remotes. In the field, right. if we could not get a proper ISDN line to the venue, that's what our backup was. It was something. It wasn't the export, but it was another. Some of the other vendors had similar type products. Well, all this came up because I I was 
somebody posted on Facebook, which ever happens every few months, somebody says, well, I just did my last ever ISDN session, or I just finally pulled the plug on my ISDN, or the telephone company <laughs> disconnected my ISDN for the last time, and somebody posted, and I figured out who it was. This is one of my clients. His name's Jeff Collins. So I'll give Jeff credit. He's in the Nashville area. He's like, yeah, I still right use my Zephyr Extreme connected via the VISDN interface that you guys make as my phone patch. And I love it. <laughs> I was like, dude, you win. <laughs> you win. That is amazing. <laughs> that is an extreme phone patch. But he's but he's not the only one. And he's not the only one, right? He's not the only one that love their Zephyrs for that phone patch. And just to be clear, like if somebody's out there going, I really want this bad, like I want this bad, you can get an extreme for $50, okay? They you can are- get it for less than the shipping of the box. <laughs> yes. Itself. The extremes are essentially worthless to almost everyone. They're and- good for holding stuff up away from moisture in a basement. Right. Yes. And then, and then you can, you can reach out to Robert <laughs> and <laughs> he will set, set you, up. you up with the VISDN. I will light that thing up. <laughs> and he'll light That's that right. sucker up and it will work and you will have God's phone patch. So <laughs> you will. Anybody out there is really jonesing for that. <laughs> we can make that happen. Your, your phone patch, which is just really not being recorded anyways, can sound better than a Skype phone call, better than any, Yeah. It'll be the full 64 kilobit phone data, phone patch. Yeah. You're still, but you're still, are you still limited to the phone bandwidth of like, what is yes. it? 100, well, 200 G7 hertz 11. to 3,400 like 3K. hertz? It's like 3K. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at so right here. Like the, the, it's, the, it's, yeah. It's 8 bit 8K, right? Right. 200 so to 3,400 it's, hertz. It's uncompressed. G711 is PCM. Right, right. But so it, it's uncompressed, but it's but it rolls off at 200 bit. though. Like it doesn't extend below 200 hertz. Well, there's two things about it. So first of all, have you ever wondered why a phone call in Europe sounds different? Like the dynamics of a phone call from Europe sounds different than the dynamics of a phone call from the United States. Oh. Have you ever noticed that? Mm, never thought about that way. Okay. Well, that is. I believe the way it is is a phone call from from Europe is more noisy, but has a higher dynamic range. Hmm. A phone call from the United States is more compressed. Right. And what's going on there is that. So 8K defines your bandwidth. Basically, Nyquist's frequency of 8K is 4K. Right. So you're not getting anything above 4K out of the phone call. Right. Done. 8-bit gives you whatever that is, 6 times 8. It gives you 48 decibels of range. Right. But depending on how you use those bits, you can use them logarithmically or linearly. Okay. To squeeze a little bit more dynamic range out of it by using them logarithmically. And that's what the phone system does. Oh, so that's what mu log, mu law, and a law exactly. Mu law and a law. And if you cross them, you get distortion because it's like decoding it at the wrong, like it's scaling it wrong. I mean, there there are voice actors whose job it is is to deliver audio for phone systems. Oh yes, I have to do it all I've the time. Yeah, and there are I've, I've done this, all kinds done of this weird yeah. codecs. Some sixteen bit, some eight bit, eight bit, some yeah. Yeah, eight bit U law. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's usually G seven one one a law or, or U law. One right. of those two. And it's not every it. dog can export those files either. None Twisted of them Wave can. can do a lot oh, of them, yeah. but not all of them. Yeah, no, no, WaveLab can export that file, but you can't play it back. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. funny, huh? You can make yeah. it, but you can't play it. Yeah. So I, I'd record normally in 2448 and then right. do the edit, play back, make sure it's still there. But you can honestly say it's uncompressed. <laughs> yeah. It's just data <laughs> it's reduced. Like- it's way. It's not compressed. It's, just not, it's, it's just, not very much data. There's not a lot of data to compress because it's, it's nothing there. And it yeah. was like I remember the first time they said, "Oh, can you save it in this format?" I'm like, "What the?" F-? Anyway, <laughs> but, and did and they tried the to play it back, and it's like I can't even play this thing back. And they're See, like, "Thank but, you very much." Yeah. But think about this: that that is 64 kilobits per second, and you give something like Source Connect 64 kilobits per second, and it's going to make that sound a hundred times better. Yeah. Oh my god! A yeah. Thousand times better. Yeah. AAC I mean, or. Whatever. Yeah, with AAC, it'll take that 64 kilobits and use it for every, like, you know. That's right. Every bit of data that it can soak out of it. And that's yep. the, but what, 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 some other differences, though, is like G711 is instantaneous. Very, very, very low latency. Oh. How about Opus? Where does that fit in between those two? Opus is basically similar to what Source Connect's using. Source Connect uses MPEG-4 from, um, like AAC, right. MPEG-4 from Fraunhofer. But Opus is sort of a, a free... Kodak that has similar performance. It doesn't quite go as high end. Like it doesn't do high sample. But isn't it much lower latency than AAC? 
it's about the same. It's like 20 milliseconds. Oh, okay. They're, they're gotcha. very similar. Like it's just, it's just a kind of a, a, a free version of something that we had to pay many, many, many hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah, for. Yeah, to license <laughs> yes. from Fraunhofer. And still do. But it is better. You know, it's like you're yeah. splitting hairs. But Opus, Opus is very um, general communications based and it is very high performance and it, it, it's very o- Opus effective. Opus fails downward in terms of sound quality, right? Isn't that the problem with Opus for pro use? Yeah, it, it well, it's limited to certain bit depths. Doesn't um, it fall back to like silk or something? Yes, it has a voice codec built in. So Opus is yeah. the dual voice and music codec. Tangent alert. sort of knows when it wants to switch from one to the other. And that's its magic. It can do both. It can be a good voice and music codec. And AAC does too. Opus is probably possibly a little bit more efficient, but it doesn't sound quite as good. Yeah. And it's not as flexible. It can't do as many sample rates. Um, you folks on it, this show are listening to nothing but AAC, baby. <laughs> yes, yes. No, no, we're, we're listening to both. Well, yeah, well, yeah, you're we're listening to AAC it. through Source Connect. Yeah. Right, what exactly. goes out on the product is, is AAC, yeah. is the high. But, right, because Source Connect now, the, the Chrome version, that is That's Opus. Opus, yeah. Right, but the application, the Source Connect application is AAC. I think it's AAC ELD, which is extremely extreme low, low delay. Yeah, ELD, yeah. low latency, right? Yeah, yeah, we upgraded to that a couple of years oh, ago. Cool. I think the issue with Opus, though, is um, if you ever had a lunch date, I'm, unfortunately, Miss Opus regrets she's unable to lunch today, madam. And they're, 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 they're and the Opals are Cole terrible Porter, cars, too. For anyone that doesn't yeah. know that song, I did not get that reference at all, but yeah. thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> There you go. That was another one of our crazy wild <laughs> Mr. Toad's wild ride tangent uh, rat hole episode. We even got a bit of it. Yeah. got to mention Cole Porter. So 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 to bring it back, there you go. If 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 you just want to pair your Zephyr up with your Mackie 1202 and you know, like you can still do that. Excellent. And live the glory days. All right, I'll get the soldering iron out now and start working on that. <laughs> well, if you have if you have an Apollo twin with line outs, boom. Uh, oh, you yeah. can line out yeah. into that sucker and have the, the world's best one. <laughs> uh oh, here comes another George fix of the Apollo. Time to run. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was fun. Is it over? The Pro Audio Suite. With thanks to Tribooth. And Austrian Audio. Recorded using Source Connect. Edited by Andrew Peters. And mixed by Voodoo Radio Imaging. With tech support from George the Tech Whittem. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and join in the conversation on our Facebook group. To leave a comment, suggest a topic, or just say good day, drop us a note at our website, theproaudiosuite.com.